Hi guys and welcome back to my channel again. Back with another video and today's video is another ranking one. We are ranking the best Star Wars movie from worst to best. Let's go. So like I said, in today's video, we're gonna be ranking all the Star Wars movies. Why? My personal opinion, which I think is the worst, which I think is the best, I will be including the Disney movies. Hold up. Wait a minute. The prequels, the originals, etc. So let's get straight into it and start off this list. There's 11 movies on this list. So I'm gonna start from 11, work my way all the way up to one. Remember, this is my opinion. You may not agree with it, but it's my opinion. You probably got your list, share your list. Let's go. So at 11, the film that I think is the worst Star Wars film of all of them, The Last Jedi. You need I say anymore? Let me just put that film title right there and you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. The Last Jedi was just, we're a Star Wars movie, let's be honest, in my opinion anyway. So I, I'm not even going to waste my energy talking about all the things that I don't like about it because I could be here forever, so let's just move on. Number 10, Solo. Now, you know how I can tell a Star Wars movie from, okay, this ain't a Star Wars movie. My wife hates Star Wars hates it if she likes something star wars then it doesn't it's not real star wars because she hates the original trilogy she does not like it one bit so if i put something star wars on and she enjoys it i know straight away it's lost the star wars feel to it and solo she enjoyed i did not at all i thought it was terrible i thought the actor playing han was trying too hard to be harrison ford and that's where he went wrong so yeah Solo is number 10. At number 9, what I probably think is the most overhyped film of this decade, The Force Awakens. Now, when it came out, obviously, like it won, I was so stoked when I saw the trailer and I saw Han back and I saw Leia and all that. I was so stoked. But they duped us. They made out that Luke Skywalker was actually going to be properly in the film. And what is he in? A post credit scene. I mean, come on. Terrible. I could go on about the things that are terrible about this film, but like with the previous two, I could be here all day. But I will just say this when it came out people were making out this was the greatest star wars film ever i went on twitter and i got bashed for this i said i thought the same and everyone else thought the same when the phantom menace came out and as time has taught us we were wrong and i said when people look back on force awakens they'll realize this film wasn't that good and what do you know a lot of people are saying that film weren't that good anyway moving on Number eight on the list. Number eight, Rise of Skywalker. As you can tell, I'm not a big fan of the Disney Star Wars movies. So, sorry about the sun. Um, yeah, Rise of Skywalker. It just, there's a lot I don't like about the Disney Star Wars films, to be honest. And this is kind of prime example of it. I just thought it was stupid. I mean, why is it called Rise of Skywalker for a start? Who's the Skywalker? There's no Skywalker there. It, it's a basically a clickbait title. They're making you think that Rey is a Skywalker. She's not. She's not a Skywalker. It's a clickbait. Moving on. Next. Next, at number seven, we've got Rogue One, which I actually thought was Disney's best Star Wars movie, in my opinion. I mean, it's not got all the glitz and glamour that the other three probably attempted to have, but it's grounded. It just concentrates on being a movie instead of trying to be a big explosion of a Star Wars movie. Because that's what Disney's for. I mean, look, when Disney got the rights, they said we're hoping it's open auditions for the new Star Wars film. Not one person that attended them open auditions got a role, because there was no role it was just a publicity stunt to get people talking about star wars so yeah this is disney in a nutshell really isn't it attention again but um yeah i think rogue one was a decent film i enjoyed it i thought um the peter cushion cgi weren't that bad i thought it was all right well i mean when i first saw it and i saw peter cushion i got so excited i was like oh my god you know but yeah yeah moving on number six on the list is episode one a phantom menace um, I remember going to see this in the cinema when I was in my early teens and I was already obsessed with Star Wars because of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and No Hope and all that. But Phantom Menace got me all hooked again, you know, hooked again to do, uh, to be into Star Wars again, you know, because you're a kid, you go into phases and that, but Star Phantom Menace got me proper hooked again all over again, man. And I loved that film when I was a kid. As I've gotten older, I'm going to despise it. But it's still not as bad as some of the films that Disney had churned out. So, there we go. Number five on the list. Attack of the Clones. Now, I thought this was actually a quite a good Star Wars film. Because there were the prequels. The prequels have got a lot of... Um, heat you know everyone's saying that they're bad that this to that attack of the clones weren't that bad i thought it was okay i mean as far as the prequels are concerned i think barring phantom menace i think the other two were 
were okay movies they weren't that bad you know obviously you know some worse than others but yeah i thought attack of the clones was a good film we got tomorrow anderson making his first appearance as jango fett you know which he didn't relate become boba fett so yeah i thought it was an all right film got christopher lee in it i mean can't go wrong with christopher lee man peter cushion then prince christopher lee but yeah attack of the clones next on that list at number four when i tell you what number four is you're gonna be like okay he's our old school Star Wars fan. There ain't no changing his mind. There ain't. Number four is Revenge of the Sith. That's right. The original three are all the top three. And that's quite shocking to me that how long ago Return of the Jedi come out and it's still, Gen 3 are still can't be touched. Um, Revenge of the Sith is number four. Um, everything built up to this film, we were all waiting for it. This is the moment that Anakin's gonna become Darth Vader. I think, although I've got it as the best prequel, I think the arc of turning Anakin to be this evil could have been done better. I mean, the reason he becomes evil in the first place it doesn't seem to make any sense to me to make sure padme won't die what's the point if she's not even with you bro and she hates you i really don't get it it's like no offense if the jedi can't find a way to keep people alive then i don't think the sith can they're lying to you bro and they just showed i think it gets i guess the way they were trying to show it was that anakin was that gullible and he wanted to believe it that much that you know he just believed it and he believed that that was what was gonna happen it's like he gone for all that bro and she's dead you know so then what i don't get is if She's dead now, bro. Why are you still a Sith? You know, that it doesn't make sense why he would still be a Sith then. Because he was only a Sith for her. But if she's gone. He's got no reason to still want to, you know, work with Palpatine. But yeah, he gets all his allegiance. I mean... I don't think they paid it off as much. I felt like there's a bit of story that needed to be told about why, you know, he became so dedicated to the Emperor. Or maybe they'll, you know, explain it in Obi Wan's show when we get deeper into it. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, when you're the Sith, number four. Number three, A New Hope. Now, A New Hope is a classic. We all know this. It's a great movie. And I've only got it at the bottom of the originals pile because I feel the pacing of the movie is slow. The, slow, the film feels like it's moving at such a slow pace. And and then you get to the end of the film and you're like oh, what is this is the end of the film already you know you're you're quite surprised that you got to the end of the film already because you feel like not much has actually happened and that's pretty much what the film feels like it finishes and you feel like you've not really watched the film yet i mean obviously it's a trilogy so george is obviously trying to it's almost just a setup for empire strikes back but if you're judging it on a standalone film it is pretty boring so i could understand why some people won't like it but that's why i got it on the third on my list second on my list is return of the jedi um only because i just feel it wasn't as good as empire you know but it's still a fucking great movie you know it's when i saw empire Empire and I couldn't wait for Return of the Jedi. I, I needed to know what was gonna happen, you know, so yeah, Return of the Jedi is such a it's by far better than any other film below it. And number one, Empire Strikes Back. Find me a better Star Wars movie than Empire Strikes Back. Oh wait, you can't because it's the best. It's not even debatable. I think every Star Wars fan will probably tell you the same thing. They'll all say Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. It can't be touched. I don't even know why Disney bloody bought the, the rights to Star Wars. Because they're never going to make a movie better than Empire Strikes Back. You know, I mean, it's just stupid to even consider it. All they've churned out is rubbish. Let's be honest. Has anything they've churned out been as enjoyable as watching back one of the originals? No. Empire Strikes Back, number one, no debate, not even considering it, you know. And there we go. You know, and in the words, you know, of the Stormtroopers, these aren't the droids we're looking for. See you later.